Hello and welcome to this video on scatter graphs. It's part of our functional skills maths course at levels 1 and 2, but this video is specifically for level 2 students. The learning outcomes are to draw and interpret scatter diagrams and recognize positive and negative correlation. Because it's to do with data and the data cycle, the drawing and interpreting of scatter graphs comes into process. So people go away and ask the question, they collect the information, and then they produce the scatter graph from the collected data. It's unlikely that you're going to spend a lot of time plotting a scatter graph from scratch because there's quite a lot of things to do for it. So the video concentrates on interpreting scatter graphs. So what is a scatter graph? Well, a scatter graph is a diagram that shows the relationship between two sets of data. In the example we have here, we're trying to work out if somebody is good at maths, whether they're also good at physics. And what we do is for each student, we plot a cross for their maths assessment mark against their physics assessment mark. So here Johnny got around 30 marks in his maths and he got about 18 marks in his physics. So we little put a little cross there. So each of these crosses represents a student's marks in maths against physics. Now, as you can see with all these crosses, the crosses go roughly from the bottom left to the top right. And this line that I've drawn should be a straight line drawn with a ruler and it goes as close to all of these as it possibly can. And this is called a line of best fit. In other words, it shows that our general consensus with all our marks go from the bottom left up to the top right. It doesn't have to go through zero and it doesn't have to go through any particular point. It needs to be evenly weighted between all of our points. If there was one student who was dreadful at maths and brilliant at physics and he was over here, we would ignore it. We wouldn't draw our line towards that cross. We would just circle it and call it an outlier. In other words, it's a one-off. We're going to ignore it. And it's either a not an anomaly, which is not easy for me to say, or an outlier. And what we do with it is we circle it and say, we're going to ignore that when we draw our line of best fit. Now this trend from the bottom left to the top right is called positive correlation. So the whole point of a scatter graph is, is there any correlation? Is there a relationship between being good at maths and good at physics? And here we can say there is because our data tends to go from bottom left to top right. And we call that positive correlation. So correlation tells us if there's a relationship, and if there is a relationship that goes from bottom left to top right, it's called positive. And if it goes from the top left to the bottom right, it's called negative correlation. So we describe correlation as either positive or negative. Now back to our diagram, we've already talked about it. Our line of best fit should be a straight line that goes as close to the data as possible. Now when you're placing the line, you don't want to go through any particular points. It has to go through the middle of all of them, so you want it to kind of balance out what's on the left with what's on the right. And it goes from one end of the graph to the other. It doesn't necessarily have to go through zero. Don't feel you have to force it through zero. Because somebody might not get any marks in maths, but get 20 marks in physics. So don't be tempted to stick it through zero. 
the most important thing that it balances both sides off. So the line of best fit is a straight line that goes as close to as many of these as possible. Now it's going to be different for every student. But it does need to be in this kind of area here to be correct. And again, because it's our physics against maths diagram, it is positive correlation. Here we plot the amount of rainfall in millimetres against the amount of sunshine in hours. And as you can see, it goes from the top left down to kind of the bottom right. Now you can play with your line of best fit, you can move it around a bit if you're not happy whether you, where you originally drew it, but it kind of goes like that. So this is showing negative correlation. In other words, the more sunshine you have, the less rain you get. Or conversely, the less sunshine you have, the more chance you have of rain in millimetres. So in this diagram, we have negative correlation. In this particular diagram, we've plotted the temperature against the number of ice creams sold. So it's very, very strong positive correlation. Because if I put my straight line in through here, you can see it almost goes through half of the points, which is very strong positive correlation. So the warmer the weather, the more ice creams that I sell. Now, there is a bit of a classic question that you tend to get asked in functional skills. So the first thing they'll get you to do is plot a point that they haven't drawn. So, for example, Jane scored 40 in maths and 60 in physics. So you have to plot her point on the graph. So plotting one point is your first mark. They then get you to draw the line of best fit. So you draw your line of best fit for the data. So this is my line of best fit that I've drawn. So draw your line of best fit. And as long as it's in this area, you will get the marks showing positive correlation. They'll then ask you to comment on the correlation. And you must use the word positive correlation to get the mark and then finally they will get you to predict something from your line of best fit so let's just say Andrew took the maths exam and scored 60 marks what would you expect him to get in his physics exam so what you need to do is draw a line up from 60 marks and hit your line of best fit here. Then from there, draw a straight line across to his physics mark. And his physics mark would be just below 60. Let's call it 58 marks. So they give you something that you have to plot onto your line of best fit, read across to get your predicted mark for physics. And this is the classic question, because it's one mark to plot the missing point, one mark to draw your line of best fit, one mark to comment on your pattern, which is positive correlation, and then predict a score by plotting it off your line of best fit. And that completes our learning outcomes to draw and interpret scatter diagrams and recognize positive and negative correlation. The buzzwords are correlation, which is either positive if it goes up in that direction or negative in that direction. And don't forget your line of best fit that goes as close to as many of the points of data that you have. That concludes this video on scatter graphs. I hope it's have been of some use. If you have any questions or require any more practice, please see your tutor. And that completes this video.